Well, hi everyone, it's good to see you again. Uh, this is Dale Anderson, and we're continuing in our course on biblical doctrines of the faith, and we're here in another session. Today we're going to start looking at a theme that is really critical, it's really the whole concept of the church, and what did God mean when he in initiated the church, the, these called out ones as he calls them. And it means that we're going to spend some time looking at a lot of of Paul's writings because Paul was the premier writer uh, to the church. He established a church in his apostolic ministry. It's not that there weren't others. I mean, Peter went to Joppa and a church was there and this, he established, you know, Cornelius' home, the first step into the Gentile world. And, and so we have many of the uh, apostles developing and cultivating the church, but Paul would, you know, in terms of the, the New Testament, growth and development of the church. Paul would be our premier missionary and apostle that established the church, raised it up, got it going, established its organization, appointed elders for leadership and governance, and so forth. And, and then often wrote to the church's letters or to ministries that were, that were leading churches. So, you know, when we, when we look at the New Testament and start to talk about the, the doctrine of the church, what does God mean by the church, we're going to spend a lot of time reading Paul's writings. First scripture I want to share with you is in 1 Timothy chapter 3. So if you have your Bibles, turn there, get your Bibles out. We're going to spend a lot of time looking through the Word today. And Paul says these things. Now, it seems to be like a very... You know, just a very small scripture verse, a passage that helps him transition from one thought to another, which we often see happen in, in literature all the time. But as Paul is transitioning from one thought to another, he has just in First Timothy, and especially in chapter 3, discussed how to appoint elders and how to appoint deacons. And then uh, he is transitioning to another thought and he says, he says these words, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. He says, I write to you so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God, which, watch this, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of the truth. I, I mean, friends, what a statement about the church, about God's people who are called out and separated out from this present evil age and established as his people. My friends, what a great description. We are the church of the living God. We need to discover what that means and are meant to be the pillar and the ground of the truth. Think of that phrase, the pillar. That means something that is stabilizing a much bigger structure that's actually holding things up. And if you don't have those pillars. I mean, you business, you builders, you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If your pillars are not stable, you can't carry some of the weight of the rest of the, of the rest of the structure. And quite frankly, God's intention of the church, his living church, his people, is that they would be a pillar of society, that they would be a pillar of all of culture. I mean, my friends, that we would stabilize with our lives and with who we are in our relationship with God, that that we would be a pillar to our society, to our culture, and to the earth. And he also says that they are the ground of the truth, the very foundation on which everything can be built. You know, so if you want to know the truth, right, God's intention through Paul's words, right, is to tell Timothy, Timothy, the actual expression of the truth is through the person of Jesus Christ and how he's established himself and his nature and character in his people in the church. We're supposed to be able to look at the church and have a revelation of, of the truth of God, or at least a revelation of the knowledge of God. Jesus was the perfect revelation, but the church is meant to be in, in all that it's meant to be, which we'll look at in a minute. It's meant to be the foundation, the very groundwork of all truth. I mean, these are this is a profound statement. And so as we step into our study on the church, let's just remember this group of people, this church, whatever God helps us define it as, whatever we see it as, as we look into the word, it's meant to be the pillar and the ground of the truth. And it's the very gathering, the people of a living God, not a dead God. So let's, let's talk about the church. What is the church? So the Greek word for church depending on how you say it, is ecclesia or ecclesia. 
It means an assembly or a gathering of called out ones. And so when we think of, okay, called out of what, right? And it, because it's a spiritual grouping, it's a spiritual assembly, then we've been called out of this present evil age and called by the grace of God to separate ourselves to be a people unto God. Now, God said in many different, all in Old Testament and New Testament, he, he called to his people, he called to his people Israel, and he called to his people in the New Testament, Jew and Gentile alike. And he, he often uses this phrase, he says, you shall be my people and I shall be your God. Peter used this quite often in his first epistle. And he said, you shall be my people and I shall be your God. God is looking for a people who believe in him, love him with all their heart, and set their lives to live in relationship with him. In other words, you're willing to change your life for the sake of loving God. And that gathering of people is called his church, his ecclesia, his called out ones who are separating themselves from the world in order to live in order to live in relationship with God. So when we think of this assembly of called out ones, we have a common value, we have a common faith, we have a common God. We're not changing God in, in a different way. We have common set of beliefs. You know, these, these are the things that God established. When we use the word church, we're referring to the whole body of believers within a city. We're also using it for a local congregation. So the body of Christ or the people of God or the ecclesia in a city, right? Often in uh, the book of Revelation or we see with Paul, he's writing to cities, right? To the church in Thessalonica, to the church in Galatia, to the church in Colos, right? So he writes to an entire body of believers or entire assembly of people, even though there might be small neighborhood congregations because at that time we know in the book of acts often what they did is they ate and they worshiped house to house they were gathering in small groups or in homes where they were worshiping together sometimes under great persecution they would find a secluded cave somewhere but they were written to as an entire grouping of people or the ecclesia or the called out ones of a city he also wrote to households john the apostle wrote to households and so when we look at it, when we talk about the church, we're talking about the entire grouping of people within a city or within a large urban complex. We're also talking about smaller local neighborhood gatherings of people. That's the church. When we use the word church in English, that actually comes from the word kos, meaning belonging to the Lord. And the church is a company of people that is set apart who profess the lead the Lord and their allegiance to the Lord Jesus Christ. So when we consider who these people are, let's remember that first and foremost, this is a spiritual entity. God has called people out of this present evil age, this age that is under the dominion of Satan, under the dominion of death and darkness. Colossians chapter one tells us this, and he has cut them off like he did for his children Israel. He judged the gods of Egypt and called them out of Egypt. So he has cut them off spiritually from this present evil age and brought them in to the kingdom of light or the kingdom of the son of his love and established them as a grouping of people, not just individuals. One of the most dramatic shifts that we see on the earth within the body of Christ, within the church, which I believe the Lord is in the process of correcting this, is this strong, what I would call radical privatization and, and individualism that people are feeling in their faith. I, I have my faith, I believe what I believe, you can believe what you believe, but my friends, here's the thing, is that God called us out, brought us into his church, we'll look at that in different metaphors in a minute, and established us as a group of people, not just individuals. He brought us in to a body, to a family. These are different metaphors that he uses. He brought us into an army. He brought us, and he uses different metaphors to explain, to explain what we look like as a grouping of people, not just individuals. And my friends, we've been brought into his values. We've been brought into his leadership. We've been brought into 
his spiritual strength, his spiritual understanding. In other words, this is a spiritual grouping of people. This is not like a group of people that gather together called the Knights of Columbus or whoever, you know, whatever that group might be, or the knitting club or the quilting club. They're groups and you and I might get fun, you know, experiences from them. But the the church is a spiritual group of people set apart by God. And so in this sense, because we're spiritual, we live under his leadership and we are not our own, Paul tells us. We belong to him and we belong to one another. This is what Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians. And so as we look at the concepts of the church, let's remember it's a spiritual entity created by God with his life force in it. And it's meant to be the pillar and the foundation or the groundwork of the truth that describes who God is, demonstrates what he's like, displays his character, displays his power and his works. This is who we are called to be. And so as we look at these different descriptions and these different metaphors in the next session, I want us to always remember that the church is a spiritual company of people that are under one leadership. We profess faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We set our hearts to love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. We walk in truth. We walk in faith. We believe what He has given to us as our inheritance. And in this way, we are His called out people, separated from the world, brought unto Him to worship. Just like the children of Israel, as they were brought out of Egypt, before the mountain of God. They were separated from and they were separated unto. We have been called out of this present evil age of darkness and we have been separated unto God in a spiritual sense. And if you and I say yes, we are members of God's household. We are members of his ecclesia, his called out ones, spiritually empowered to demonstrate the truth of who he is and what he's like. Well, that's just kind of our opening, beginning thoughts about it. In our next session, we're going to look at different metaphors that the Lord used to describe, that Paul described the church. And so until next time, the Lord bless you. Bye-bye.